Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Roosevelt. I'm one of the inspectors with the city of Plano. Uh, I've been uh, doing inspections for Plano for a little over 19 years, and I've been in the electrical field for nearly 30. Okay. Um, I'm going to briefly uh, cover a couple of solar topics before I turn the floor back over to one of the other speakers. Um, before I begin, I was wondering, do we have any uh, solar contractors or reps or anybody here with any solar expertise? Okay, okay, I just want to make sure that... Uh, okay, great. I just want to, maybe I can get your card before I leave because when there's new product out, uh, you'll be one of the first to know about it, so I'd like to get a jump on that. Uh, I'm going to first uh, start off with um, system and and systems and equipment grounding. Article 69047 says um, ground electrical system. Alternating current uh, grounding requires if installing an AC system, a ground electrode must be provided. Now that's not anything anybody don't already know. That's basically just saying that if you have a electrical panel, you have to ground it. 690.47, uh, ground electrode system B, DC grounding requires, uh, if installing a DC system, a ground electrode must be provided. Um, there's a couple of different ways of doing this. You can As you see here, they go right in, out of the uh, AC disconnect, the DC disconnect, which is a uh, drawing right here. And one of the ways of doing it is going right to that uh, ground electro. Con um, and basically, if you do it this way, we're going to require that you um, use a, a separate acorn clamp. Uh, in some cases, that's not uh, possible to get a hold of that acorn clamp. So the code would also allow you to attach on to the, um, the grounding conductor if you use the right uh, listed uh, connector, okay? It'll also allow you to go from the disconnect right straight to the uh, AC panel. And um, those are basically three other ways to get your system grounding uh, done from the uh, disconnect. Here we have uh, equipment grounding uh, slash bonding. Uh, as you can see, we have the equipment grounding conductor, which attaches to a, a lug, which attached to the rack, which is attached to a clamp and it also uh, attaches to the module. This is basically how it's done. Uh, this is the proper way to do it anyway. Uh, and there's also a clip, as you can see, that uh, should come with that, with that uh, bonding lug right there. And um, right now, they're allowing the um, racking system to be uh, used as the uh, basically the grounding electrode uh, system also. So you're going to see this done in a lot of different uh, ways. Uh, they're going to have that clip right there, which is going to bond your, your modules together, and that'll allow the whole system to uh, basically be one bond. Here's a common way that you'll, you'll also see it. Um, basically, um, copper and aluminum is, is dissimilar metals. So we, what they're trying to do is make sure that they, they keep the aluminum and the copper separate, okay? And the one way of doing that is to uh, get a stainless steel uh, fitting between them, okay? And that keeps the, uh, the two dissimilar metals, uh, metals separated. Now, when it's done uh, properly, it's going to be done that way. But as you can see, when it's done improperly, this is what you're going to probably get in about three years or less. So um, this is basically what dissimilar metals has touched, and uh, it's going to it's going to corrode away pretty pretty quickly. Roosevelt, mm -hmm. if I could jump in here for just a second on your preceding slide, it did show what's called an acme lay-in lug. 
The metal is rated CU and aluminum both by an underwriter safety standard, but I also want to call your attention to the set screw. There's a lay-in lug that's designed for ordinary applications, and then there's certain lay-in lugs designed for underground burial where that hardware is all stainless steel, and it's almost impossible when they're new to tell them apart. If you use this type of lay-in lug here where it is not intended for underground burial, in a year or two, that set screw is going to be severely rusted, and you're going to start to lose your bond between the frame or whatever metal it's attached to and your grounding conductor is shown here and you don't notice that if you're going up and looking at a grounding scenario you better make certain that that is in fact designed for underground and that is all stainless hardware between the lay-in lug and the metal to which it's attached thank you uh, yeah he, he is 100 percent correct you have to make sure you're using the proper listed um, material for the installation that you're doing uh, using indoor fittings and material for the outdoor installation is going to get you in trouble every time uh, here's just a couple of um, disconnects that has the, uh, the proper grounding Okay. The next thing we're gonna we're gonna touch on is uh, conductor sizing slash uh, voltage drop, voltage losses. As far as voltage loss, the code really don't have a whole lot to say about uh, voltage drop, but it does have some uh, recommendations and some footnotes. And one of the things it says is a reasonable operating efficiency is achieved if the voltage drop of a feeder or a branch circuit is limited to 3%. However, the total voltage drop of a branch circuit plus a feeder can reach 5% and still achieve a reasonable operating efficiency. So what I was able to do was um, I, I found a spreadsheet uh, and some of the items you're going to need in order to fill that spreadsheet out is the, uh, the maximum power current and the uh, maximum power voltage. Now, the, the current is basically the, the amperage. And this is some of the information you will need in order to uh, fill out a, a, a calculation uh, spreadsheet. And this, I hope everybody can see this. In this particular, um, what I, basically what I did, I went to why not, uh, dot solar and uh, pull down this, uh, this spreadsheet and you just plug in some of the information. In this particular case, the guy went with uh, the name is, uh, I think it's Fearless. Uh, and uh, in this particular case, he started out with some number 10 and um, it shows to be 100 feet, but I think that's, that's down there in back. So it, it's really like, a, like 50 feet. Um, and in this particular case, um, you put in the panel uh, volts, which is 17.4, and the panel amps, which was a 7.76. And in this particular demonstration, with that number 10, uh, since we're trying to get no more than a 3% voltage drop with 100 feet, they are already over 4.5, so uh, this installation would not, uh, would not work. And here it shows a 12 which at the same 100 foot, and that is even more of a voltage drop. It's like a 7.2. And it looks like in an installation like this one, they would have to actually go to a number 8 uh, with that 100 feet with all the um, information that was given in there in order to get below that 3% uh, maximum voltage drop that the, the code requires. And I just uh, filled it in and uh, just had a few numbers, uh, different size gauge wire, to, and I shortened the footage to 65 feet just to see what kind of numbers we'd get. And uh, as you can see, even with 65 feet, um, you're not going to be able to use uh, 16, 14, or 12. You're going to have to go down to a number 10 uh, in order to get below that 3%. 
And here um, we shorten the feet, uh, use the same wire and shorten the feet. And as you can see, the voltage drop is, um, is way below on this one. So uh, this is just some of the, um, the ways you can, you can put different numbers in this uh, spreadsheet and on this calculation and, and uh, see what the voltage drops uh, end up being. Okay, and the other thing we're gonna, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, is, is labeling. And uh, in the NEC article uh, 690.31E3 uh, and in the uh, 2012 International Fire Code uh, article 605.11, it gives you some information about the material and the marking for labeling. Uh, and um, some labels are going to come with the um, the modules and the inverters and uh, different types of uh, solar equipment. But uh, there's some labels, of course, you're going to uh, have to put on yourself. And here's just an overall uh, layout of of just about everything, ex with the exception of the rapid shutdown disconnect that you would see, you know, um, and some of the labeling that, that would have to be installed on some of this equipment. And I'm just going to go through some slides um, showing some of the labeling that's going to be required. Um, now, the labeling itself, um, the material that it's made out of, it has to be reflective, weather resistant, and suitable for the environment. And uh, it also has to have a, a, a minimum of uh, three quarter inches in height. Just some of the labeling. Um, now on the EMT conduit and raceways, now the labeling on those have to be every 10 feet. And they also have to be within, um, within a foot of any turns or bends and within a foot of uh, any uh, roof penetrations. Okay, here shows a couple of um, converters, inverters rather, that have the uh, the labeling on them. And that pretty much concludes um, 